So we're starting off here in Weyburn, Saskatchewan. It's a load of lumber going down to Valley, Nebraska. It's a beautiful day for trucking. Weyburn, Saskatchewan. It's in the southeast side of the province. I'm on my way down to North Dakota. I'm gonna cross from North Portal, Saskatchewan into Portal, North Dakota. And we're gonna snake our way down towards Nebraska, get this lumber off my trailer, and head back home. Like I was saying in yesterday's video at the end there, I had a hard time finding parking in this town. They took at least the 50 to 70 parking spots away from us. There used to be this big parking lot at co-op where we would all, it was sort of like the go-to truck stop. It was a perfect place to stop on the way down to the US and going through town. They had a nice restaurant there. Everyone would go and enjoy a nice meal. And then they decided to build a big grocery store right on the parking lot. It took, took up like the whole parking lot and it went down from like 75 spots down to 15. So I, I showed up here this morning and I was, or I mean, well, it was early this morning, late last night. And I was trying to figure out where to park. I ended up having to park on a street in an industrial zone where parking is allowed. I sort of had to do some Googling to figure out if I was allowed to park here. Found out I was. There's nowhere else to park. And I had one minute left on my clock when I stopped. One minute. I couldn't go anywhere else. But it worked out. So we got parked. Now we slept. We're ready to go. Let's start the new day. I'm going to stop in Minot for some fuel, a uh, shower, and possibly a truck wash. This is a beautiful day. It's, it'd be a shame not to wash the truck on a day like this. But we'll see what the lineup is like. I don't have a lot of time. There's a long lineup at the Blue Beacon. I won't be able to, but we'll oh, check it out and see what happens. That's quite the unit. I wonder how fast you can seed your field with that thing. That's a big air seeder. I believe. I mean, farmers can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's an air seeder. I am a truck driver, not a farmer. Though I know some farmers. All right, so I'm getting all my stuff ready here. I'm in Esteban at the Petro Pass, right before the border. Got to make sure that I have all my paperwork together, that I have uh, passport ready to go, my identification, everything else within arm's reach, all the information that they're probably going to ask me about at the front of my mind so I'm not stumbling over my words, not looking suspicious. I have nothing to hide, but you know, they can be intimidating. That's their job. The customs officers, it's not their job to be your friend. It's their job to figure out what your business is in their country and if you have any bad intentions right Since I've got everything here now set and ready to rock now when you show up to customs uh, don't expect them to be too friendly with you okay they might even treat you kind of suspiciously you know that's their job that's what they're paid to do they're not paid to be your friend most of them are pretty friendly, I'm going to say that. Like 99% of them are pretty friendly. Every, every once in a while you show up to the window and someone's obviously had a bad day or they probably had a bad experience with someone else at the window right before you and they're kind of put off by that. It's not usually you. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're friendly, you know. Go up there, smile, answer their questions, speak when spoken to, and don't go into too much depth. Answer what they ask. Don't go into too many details. If they want to know, they'll ask. Let's go to the U.S., shall we? I'm excited. I love our neighbors.
Okay, so we've crossed into the U.S. I'm just gonna make myself some food here because my stomach is really hungry all of a sudden. I'm gonna get down to Minot. We're gonna get fueled. Then we're gonna have a shower. And then we're gonna go over to Blue Beacon at uh, Schatz Travel Plaza. That's what it's called. See how long the lineup is. If there's no lineup, we're gonna get in line, get a truck wash. If there's too long of a lineup, I don't got time today. We'll get the truck washed tomorrow, I guess. Anyway, enough babbling. Enough babbling. I'm hungry. Stopped in here at the Flying J in Minot, grabbed some fuel, only filled up half tanks just to keep myself uh, under legal weight limits, and uh, grabbed a shower, a little bite to eat. I'm gonna swing past Blue Beacon, see if there is uh, a lineup or not. I'm kind of thinking there probably is. We'll see. If there's no lineup, maybe we'll go in. If there's anyone in line, I don't. I just don't have the time today. We'll maybe stop in Fargo. There's another blue beacon there. I'm not in the biggest of rush, but I don't want to drag my feet either. You know what I mean? I already stopped for a shower today. Well, that's that's a given. I mean, the truck needs a shower too, right? It's only fair if you, if you look at it that way. I'm trying to talk myself into it here. <laughs> Let's go spend a hundred bucks and wash the truck. My, sh left. my shower's a lot cheaper. My shower's actually free with the fuel I bought. Oh man, this is a hard one to get across here. I should have gone for it, I should have gone. Why am I so nice? Okay, after this pickup, after this pickup coming from our left, I'm giving her. Give her, give her. Let's go. truck stop here at Chats in uh, Minot just so I can get a look at the lineup for Blue Beacon next door I don't know what this Dodge guy is doing here where all right that was an interesting maneuver okay that's all right I'm doing my own interesting maneuver is there a lineup there there is no one in line okay Oh wait, no, no, there's two guys in line, they just haven't moved up yet. Yeah, there's a grain hauler there. Why hadn't they moved up? Like there was a grain hauler back there. 
but it looks like he hadn't moved up in a long time. Maybe he fell asleep in line. Messing around with that. Ah, shoot. Okay. No time for a truck wash today. That's disappointing. here for whatever reason I just thought of that they actually have a sign on the back of their building before you go in it says that the prices here are higher due to something something I don't know what their excuse is meters, turn left on 20th Street and then turn right in 40 meters forgot about that so, well, well we'll swing by their uh, the other truck wash Constant battle, dodging potholes everywhere I go. truck stop hoping to find a spot here to park overnight I've only got 23 minutes left on my clock so I have to find a spot here you have arrived at your destination on the right side stones truck stop how do I get back there now Pretty full. Oh wait, nope, there's a spot right here, no way. Ah no, they parked too close together. That one truck has taken up two spots. Well that's not very nice. People be careful how you park. There's other people that need to park too. minutes remaining made it and this is where we'll sleep tonight I don't know why no one parked on this side you see that back row there is pretty much completely full there's one spot open there but uh, that truck who parked all crooked he's uh, got an engine fan that keeps kicking on and off very loud that can be irritating at night he's also got a reefer but that whole row is pretty much filled up and there's all this room on this side huh. so this is where we'll sleep okay I'm gonna be honest I moved <laughs> found a much better spot now I'm right in the corner I just have a pickup truck there as a neighbor. He's sleeping in his pickup truck there. 
And one guy here, he is idling on a perfect night when you don't need to idle and burn fuel, but that's his choice. Let him idle if you want, whatever. I was parked right over there, you see? But, unfortunately, you know that bobtail? You probably heard him while I was back there. His truck was making an awful lot of noise. Like, idling at probably something like 1500 RPM. Engine just screaming. It's too old of a truck to be doing a regen. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but the uh, engine was just screaming very loud. I can tell why he has no neighbors beside him now. And plus his engine fan kept kicking on and off just like that other truck. That's the thing. Like, on my truck, I have a, a button right here that controls my engine fan. So on the cold nights in wintertime when I have to keep my truck running just to keep things moving... If my engine fan keeps kicking on and off and on and off and on and off, what I do is I turn my engine fan on. That doesn't happen very often on cold nights now, now that I'm thinking about it. But that's just what I would do is common courtesy because the guy beside me doesn't need this like, whoosh, 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 every five minutes, right? This engine fan just screaming, especially on Cummins engines uh, in, uh, well, that was a Freightliner over there. Some of these engines, like the engine fan, you can't even hear. But on mine and a lot of other trucks, when the engine fan kicks on, you hear it. It just screams. And for some reason, some of these trucks, the engine fan will kick on and kick off. And kick on and kick off. And I, I can sleep in a truck. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining about noise. I'm a truck driver. I can sleep with the truck beside me idling. That doesn't bother me. It sort of puts me to sleep, actually. I like the sound of diesel engines. As long as it's a, pretty much a steady sound. Even reefers. You know, I always bug guys with reefers. They don't bother me that much, really. It's, it turns on, and it stays on for a while, and then it shuts off for a while. It's not a... Unless it's like going on and off and on and off. It, it's when there's like a loud noise that wakes you up, and then it turns off, and you just fall back asleep, and then it turns back on and wakes you up. And then it turns off, and you fall back asleep, and then it turns back on. I'm just tired right now. I know. You can probably tell. I'm just... <laughs> I always have to circle the parking lot like three times. I'm like a dog. I have to do a couple of circles before I lay down for the night. And I usually move parking spots. I'll park in one spot. And I'll walk around my truck. First of all, make sure I'm straight. If I'm not straight, I rearrange myself so that I'm straight. And then I pay attention. I shut the truck off and I listen. I sit in the sleeper on the bed there or on the seat here and I listen. Are the people beside me quiet? If they're too noisy, if their trucks are too noisy, or if they're playing their music too loud in their truck, and I couldn't hear it before until I turned my engine off, I start her back up, and I go find a different spot. Now, I'm not going to fight with their noise to get some sleep through the night. I'm just going to park somewhere where I can actually get a good sleep. Because tomorrow i got a full day of work. Yeah, I can't afford to be kept up all night by someone playing their music too loud or listening to their podcast on max volume in their truck or, you know, having their truck idling so high with their engine fan kicking on and off, even some reefers. If I park beside a reefer, if it's a good reefer, one of the quieter ones, man, it doesn't bother me. But if it's like one of the older ones or one of the models that's like really loud, I will definitely, I'll pull right back out of that parking spot, I'll go find a different spot. I value my sleep on the road because, you know, I don't, I don't want to hurt anybody out here. I can't, I don't want to drive tired. So a good sleep is very valuable. That's enough ranting about that. That's enough ranting. You guys get it. I talk about these things not to complain, but to relate to you. Because I know all of you are, are thinking the same thing. You feel the same way as me. People who don't agree with me tend to not watch my videos. You can always tell who they are because they'll, they'll drop in for a video or two. They'll hit the thumbs down and they'll leave a nasty comment down below and then they're gone. Right? They don't come back. But... People who like my stuff usually agree with what I, I talk about. And when I when I rant about things, sure, yeah, I'm complaining a little bit. Yeah, sure, why not? We can be honest about that. We all complain every now and then. But I complain because it's a vlog. It's a video blog. And it, it's something to talk about that you and I can relate on because I know you feel the same way for the most part. If I'm wrong, let me know down below in the comment section. If I'm right, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the bell button. And I'll see you around here for tomorrow, for tomorrow's video. Don't know what I was trying to say. I'm getting pretty tired. Hit all the buttons. All right, and I'll, I'll see you right here tomorrow. I'm, 
I need to go to bed. This is what I mean. I, I need to go to bed. I need a good night's sleep. Lots of work to do tomorrow. Tomorrow from here we'll be going to Valley, Nebraska, dropping off this lumber. I don't know where my reload is yet, but I've heard that it might be back up in North Dakota, so I might need to turn around and book it back up here. I'm 437 kilometers away from my destination, which means it would be almost 900 kilometers or almost 550 miles to go deliver and get back to right here. So I might come back right here again tomorrow. That's, that's pretty much a full day of work. I might go a little further too. You'll have to tune in tomorrow. It's not, I don't even know what's going to happen.